I'm staying at Maspumelele in this small township. Uh, there is a lot of things that are happening in our areas. One week ago, there was a huge fire. There is a lot of people losing their homes as well, their staff. Yeah, I was likely to survive. Having a factory making puppets meant that we can employ people who wouldn't normally get a job in a vaguely similar area. It's been thrilling for us to be able to do that um, and to see the effect that this work has on their lives. People come into the company as apprentices and become real craftspeople. That's special for us and that's a very positive consequence of War Horse. Because of War Horse we're able to hand make a whole lot of things. It's a, an anachronistic activity that we're involved in. It's binding and bending and soaking cane and sculpting really over months. It's still a very handmade process, but what has happened is we've been able to employ people full time. We've always wanted to teach people how to make puppets. I love the social dynamic of the factory, the development of the people. The under no good liner, he's got an interest both in the visual arts, but he's also very interested in drama and he has started his own group. The reason I'm trying to make the puppets, I also try to keep the youth busy because there's a lot of drugs, as well as the alcohol. I started to be involved with the puppet at Handspring in 2009. It was my first time to see the puppets and I, I was so excited. With the people that work in the workshop, um, they come in various ways to us. There's Jessica, who trained as an actress and wrote us an email saying she understood that we, we only uh, employed guys in the factory. And she said she'd been told by friends of hers that she walked like a man. <laughs> so we thought, okay, she's in. There's Tace, who developed the cane uh, technology that we use in the horses. Cane's got the two advantages of, on the one hand, it's light and strong, and on the other hand, if you deal with it properly, you can maintain shape with that pretty well. It keeps its shape, as they kind of say, it's got a memory of its own. It's, if you can force it to retain the memory, it stays there forever. Once the ribs are fitted onto the aluminium frame. They need to be spaced in accordance with the design. The shape of the horse is pretty much captured in the setting up of the ribs. I suppose what we have is a factory where we need people who are artists because ultimately one is making sculptural forms that move. We realized how amazing uh, Adrian's designs were right from the start. No changes whatsoever was made at any point. And I noticed actually that on the on the the, the Joey in New York, I don't know if this is flipping over all right. Yeah, this one flips fine. Adrian's puppets always pay respect to the anatomy of the person or the animal that's being depicted. 
But if you look at them, there's actually quite a large degree of abstraction involved. The degree of abstraction of the horses is, a, is out of necessity really. It's to make a light, flexible um, figure that encases the necessary manipulators and movement that, that the horse needs. Adrian knew very little about horses when he started out. Uh, he went to museums. He certainly studied horses in uh, stables and on farms. Uh, read books, watched videos, uh, spoke to people. He became an expert. The ear, I mean, he's paying attention now because yeah. it's kind of half turned. That's focus, focusing yes. his gaze. Yes. It's almost as if he's looking with his ears. Yeah. I looked at Mybridge's horse galloping, and what's amazing about it is that in the middle of the 19th century, he was recording a whole range of useful movements and breaking it down into segments. Making a set of horses for a production is painstaking work. Altogether, it'll probably take just over a year to make a whole set. The person inside steers the foot with this uh, solid broomstick control and underneath this lever uh, pulls that string and attaches to the lower uh, shin there and uh, pulls the lower part of the leg up and at the same time these tendons passively pull the, the hoof up as well. This whole area of the head control. It's got three levers. Uh, this one, the big one, makes the, the head go up and down. So you, you can manipulate the head also with the whole rod or with that lever. And, um, and the two small levers here moves the ears. The ears are a very important uh, emotional indicator and, and thought indicator of the horse. You've got a dual function here. You can both move the, the back leg and with, with your same hand do the tail. So you walk the back legs rather like this and you can, you can be flexing the tail as you go. I have to say that they probably are the most beautiful puppets we've made and testimony to that was when we were building them here in this studio for the first time and we had streams of people coming to look at the horses just as they were hanging in here um, and we realized that there was something that was attracting them and when we put them on the stage uh, people regard them as beautiful and I'm thrilled about that. <laughs>